Okay, we're going to look at chain rules for multivariable functions. So first of all, as with many things, we are going to look first of all at the version for single variable functions. All right, so what I have typed here is the chain rule that hopefully you remember from Calculus 1. Uh, it says if I have y as a function of u and then u is in turn a function of x, so we might think about writing y as f of g of x, so we have a function inside another function, then dy dx or f prime of x would be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So that's pretty familiar, most students remember that pretty well. Um, you might also write this chain rule as dy dx equals dy du times du dx. And really we're going to use something sort of like this form when we look at derivatives of multivariable functions. I'm going to draw a little diagram here out to the side also for single variable chain rule and then we'll look at some similar diagrams for multivariable functions. So in the function structure that we have here we have y as a function that depends on the variable u and then u depends on x. And so if we think about just kind of differentiating down this diagram here, uh, we have dy du and then we have du dx and so if we just multiply those derivatives down that branch we get the chain rule. That diagram is not a proof of chain rule, it's just a way to help you remember chain rule and we'll use some similar strategies for thinking about chain rule with multivariable functions. Okay, so when I think about a multivariable function, I'm just going to kind of start with an example here, uh, but we might have a function that is a function of say x and y and then we might have x and y that are both functions of some other variables. So one example might be we've thought about rewriting x's and y's in terms of r's and theta's. So x might be some function of say r and theta and y is some other function of r and theta. And what we're interested in though is finding the derivative of f with respect to r or theta. So I'm going to draw a diagram off to the side sort of like the diagram I have up above for the single variable function. Um, I've got my function f that is a function of x and y and then each of x and y are functions of r and theta. So I've just diagrammed the kind of variable structure for our relationships here. Uh, essentially what I'm interested in is finding the derivative of f and sort of skipping this middle layer but finding the derivative of f with respect to one of these terminal variables r or theta. All right, so if I think about the sort of paths through this diagram from f to r, I have two different paths here, the path that goes through x and then I have the path that goes through y. And so in the same way that we have those derivatives and sort of multiplying down the branches that I did in that first diagram, we're going to do the same thing here uh, for the multivariable function. So provided all these functions, my f, x, and y functions are all differentiable, then the partial derivative of f with respect to r, I need to use partial derivatives here because f would be a function of two variables, r and theta, partial derivative of f with respect to r would be the partial derivative of f with respect to x, I'm just differentiating down this first branch, times del x del r. And so that would give me the contribution to this partial derivative that kind of comes through the x and then I need to think about the contribution of that derivative that comes from the y. And then the other question is how are those related to each other? Well the answer is that they're added. This is not a proof of that. The proof is in your textbook so I'm not going to go through that right here. But uh, as we differentiate down this other branch here I'll have the partial derivative of f with respect to y and then times the partial derivative of y with respect to r. So I've just used that tree diagram there to help me organize the structure and write down this partial derivative correctly. All right, I have another partial derivative of f with respect to one of the other terminal variables here, del f del theta. And so if I'm thinking about the paths from f to theta, I go through x and then I go through y and so I can just differentiate down those branches del f del x times del x del theta and then plus 
del f del y times del y del theta. All right, our textbook draws these diagrams a little bit differently than I just did. Uh, I don't mind if you use the method the textbook uses or if you use this method, you'll see this in some other textbooks sometimes. Uh, I like to set it up like this because then I can see the structure of the entire problem all in one diagram. Our textbook does separate diagrams for kind of each terminal variable, so either way is perfectly fine with me. Um, but the main idea is that you can use that tree diagram to write down chain rule. The other thing about the tree diagrams is that you can really use that no matter how many variables you have and how many levels of variables you have. The idea generalizes to several variables at each level, several levels of composition there. So uh, it's a really handy tool for just being able to write down your chain rules correctly.